I'm with Ruben Yap, who's the COO of Zcoin. Thank you so much for chatting with me. Thank you so much. I've been a big fan of your channel and such a you know honor to be on. Thank you. I really want to get a broad overview of what we can hope to achieve in terms of privacy in financial transactions, because there are a lot of barriers to us getting to a place where we can confidently say that our transactions are private, that people aren't collecting data. So let's just start off with an overview of Zcoin, because you guys are doing some really interesting stuff. Sure. So we are a privacy cryptocurrency started in around like September 2016. We were originally using what we call the zero coin protocol, which is different than the zero cash protocol instead of like other solutions that are mixing. Uh, what we allow people to do is that we allow people to destroy their coins and at any time in the future to redeem brand new ones with no previous transaction history. So it's kind of like wiping a clean slate. That's like brand new minted coins. Yes. I mean, people pay a premium for that uh, to get those from miners, for example. Well, I think 20% 20, 20 or something like that. So, I mean, you can do this right at the protocol level uh, at, at Zcoin. I think we were the first coin that went live with uh, what we call Dandelion++ plus plus, uh, routing. Which... And that's something that uh, like Mimblewimble uses as well, right? Yes, I think Mimblewimble then uses it. It was actually original a, propo a proposal for Bitcoin. Uh, and it was actually meant to be in in 0 0.18 but for some reasons they were saying like oh uh, there were some issues of scalability and they actually took that out which was a, a big 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 shame because uh, you know, Dandelion does provide quite good privacy guarantees at the network layer. How does Dandelion work? You have to understand how uh, how the privacy leaks, right? So in Bitcoin, it uses what we call a gossip protocol, right? So if I if I send a transaction, that note that I that I first listens to the transaction tells everyone that is connected to some eight other peers, mm -hmm. right? And Anyone who receives that then just gossips to 888. Yeah. So uh, an easy way to think of it is kind of like when I drop a pebble into the pond, I can see the ripples. If I control enough the, the nodes that was connected to a majority of like the Bitcoin nodes, I can actually make uh, quite good guesstimates as to just by kind of looking at the ripples and how the transaction propagates through the network, I can kind of see where it comes from. I can actually with a 50%, maybe there's some papers on this, 50% probability say this transaction is associated with this IP address. So even if you have any sort of like on-chain privacy mechanisms, uh, that, you know, then that's all for it because you have this transaction tied to an IP address, which is really bad. How Dandelion addresses this is that instead of doing a pure gossip protocol, what it does is that when I receive a transaction, I then roll a dice and the dice uh, has a 10% chance of gossiping and a 90% chance of sending it to just one other peer. Mm -hmm. So that means I just send it to one other node. That node then rolls a dice. Should I tell everyone or should I uh, just tell one other person? Mm -hmm. So when it finally hits that 10% chance to propagate, you don't really know, you know how many hops has it gone before. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a lot harder to tell the origin of the transaction. Well, is Zcoin private by default? It's currently opt-in, but we're trying to move to a privacy on by default structure. But I do want to say that, you know, uh, I mean, yes, privacy on by default definitely has a lot of advantages and I'm not, not disputing that. But with zero knowledge proof systems, the drawbacks aren't as bad as let's say mixing solutions. When I'm a mixing, I need to have a lot of people to mix with. The way zero knowledge proofs work is the anonymity set is always constantly growing. Although yes, uh, I mean, privacy on by default would have you know increased that, but with zero knowledge proof systems, uh, it's less of a problem than let's say mixing solutions. Do you think that we'll get to a place where we can see privacy focused transactions happen in our day-to-day -day lives? I would really hope so, of course. <laughs> uh, everyone's been, talk been talking about the FATF travel rule, right? And, how that has uh, you know, resulted in delistings uh, around the world. And there's a big warning sign for privacy coins. But actually, the travel rule basically states is that if I am transferring from one like equivalent to a financial institution or something that's acting like a financial institution, like an exchange, when I'm transferring to another exchange, uh, I need to, to include like sender and receiver details, right? And whether it's a privacy or not, it doesn't matter because if the exchange does KYC, 
uh, they already know your your who you are so they can just even if you do a private transaction from one exchange to the other they could just easily pass that info there's no conflict between the FATF travel rule and um, and privacy coins that travel rule actually originated in the US the FATF is a financial action task force which is a more international thing and all they're doing is taking the US rule and saying okay everyone else should also follow this rule as well so if us aren't banning the privacy coins why are other countries taking that rule interpreting it in a different way and putting pressure on exchanges governments using it as, as an excuse mm -hmm. to ban and this has that's the bigger problem not so much the fatf travel rule but governments using excuses to ban privacy coins i think the most prime example was in japan where uh, coin check, uh, a large Japanese exchange got hacked and no privacy in coins were involved in the hack. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, instead of blaming the exchange or poor uh, things, what they happened was they just banned privacy coins, which just doesn't make sense <laughs> at all. The only other country that was like really against privacy cryptocurrency, I would say it would be like India, mm -hmm. uh, where I think they are also trying to ban cash in general. Like they say like you can only have a certain amount of cash. Zcoin is one of many privacy coins out there. And you actually did some pretty cool things in Thailand recently. Tell me about that. Late 2018, I think in November, the Thai Democrat Party uh, actually used our blockchain to run its uh, primary elections to elect its new party leader so that was pretty exciting especially i think it's the world's first like you know large-scale political election and i think 127,000 votes were cast nationwide and uh, you know the, the results were not contested and we think that although there are some uh, concerns about e-voting on blockchain we totally agree we don't think it's ready for national elections but for maybe elections with a lesser threat level especially in this case in Thailand where none of the candidates trusted each other and they didn't trust the election commission they saw public blockchains as a, like kind of a neutral ground and they're like great that that's a great use case for it private cri cryptocurrencies are also about breaking free from existing financial institu institutions and government but allowing like you know like political parties to use it is pretty cool as well a lot of people presume that bitcoin is private and they don't realize that it can so easily be identified with our real identity is there hope for privacy on bitcoin because i love the idea of coin join i encourage everyone to use if you want to use bitcoin at least be using coin join on it uh, but what are some other potential solutions we might see for bitcoin i think one of the biggest issues with bitcoin is that because you know now everyone's like seeing it as a store of value or like and it's supposed to be stable to achieve really high privacy you need to uh sacrifice auditability because you need the height amounts right and that's you i don't think they'll they want to give that up and that's fair enough and that's why uh, you know we shouldn't be looking at like bitcoin maximum let bitcoin do what it's good at there were easy ways to swap between bitcoin and privacy cryptocurrencies and you would have that choice a lot of people talk about privacy on bitcoin as if it's the second layer thing and you'll get solutions i personally am seeing as you do the interoperability between coins as perhaps being a better solution and the good thing about zcoin as you said is you can mint coins afresh yeah. that have no history at all that's that's a pretty cool way to anonymize your funds yeah and i mean everyone's talking about lightning as the like you know privacy preserving and we're looking at it like a hub and spoke structure which basically means you have a couple of hubs then even if you use like your onion routing and whatnot that only works if you have to use a lot of hops between people but if it's if everyone's just going through this central hub uh, that has the liquidity that doesn't provide a lot of protection and lightning is set up to be a semi-centralized type of thing because only the hubs would have liquidity and connections. So I do think that we wouldn't be seeing really good privacy guarantees with Lightning and we, we should be realistic about it. There are limitations to coin join, you know, because you're mixing with people, you I can, you know, taint your 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 mixers and stuff like that. So whether you can really achieve high level of privacy in Bitcoin is is questionable. And I think one of the things that we really have to think about is that we always see Bitcoin as uncensorable money, right? But if countries like North Korea, which are already reportedly already starting using Bitcoin, or even Venezuela, which has started like, you know, getting Bitcoin reserves, if that starts happening, it's only a matter of time where or like Iran suddenly starts doing this, will governments then say, okay, employ all this blacklist for all these funds. And even if they try to coin join it, it still has that 
taint to to them and they can just like freeze that whole thing until i figure out that this is legit so i do think that if you don't have privacy you don't have uncensorability and that's why we need privacy technology in general I, I completely agree. And I think that no matter what coin you're, you're using, just be looking into the privacy options on there. Don't just be sending unshielded transactions out there because we have so many options now and uh, people need to learn about them and start to use them. And the more people who use these, the more private everyone's transactions becomes. None of this stuff is bulletproof and we need to be doing whatever we can to protect our privacy. So thank you so much for chatting with me. Thank you so much, Naomi.